Well, seven countries, uh, several uh, EU member states have found cases at this point. Italy, the Netherlands, uh, the Czech Republic, uh, Spain, Portugal, Germany, Belgium, as we know. Um, and we don't know a huge amount about those cases uh, in terms of how sick those people are. And uh, we still don't know so much about uh, this new variant, how transmissible is it, do the vaccines hold up? But on top of that, obviously, we knew that Europe was going through a pretty crushing fourth wave uh, anyway, and um, when it came to the Delta variant, but in particular um, because of the disproportionate number of people in ICUs that are unvaccinated. Um, and what they're doing about it is obviously imposing restrictions, greater use of COVID certs across the EU, uh, and closing borders or having extra restrictions on people coming from those seven South African countries. But so far, you know, Gavin, there isn't any, you know, pro uh, across the EU restrictions or closing of borders. Mm -hmm. Each member state in the EU is adamant that we don't return to that. Um, but there is no closing down the borders that we had in the first and second and third wave. The whole point of the COVID cert was to allow the single market continue um, as normal. Um, so are individual countries then still implementing new procedures, even aside from the whole EU umbrella? So even individual countries deciding, for example, you need to have an extra PCR or an antigen test on top of your, your COVID cert? So Portugal is the only one who's announced that so far. Uh, which means everyone, regardless of vaccination status, has to have a negative PCR test. Now, that appears to go somewhat against the spirit of the COVID certificate because the COVID certificate to travel across the single market meant that people who had been vaccinated weren't supposed to have any rest extra restrictions applied upon them. Um, and so speaking to people from the Commission today, they're sort of looking into this because any measures that a member state takes in relation to the single market has to be proportionate. And they feel this is discriminatory because it's a catch-all measure. Having said that, the whole point of the emergency break within the COVID certificate is specifically to deal with escape variants like Omicron, even though we don't know exactly how damaging uh, or dangerous this one is yet. Of course, Portugal sees it fit to take these measures at this point. So um, we'll see, we have to see, I suppose, what's going to emerge from that. But I think the EU will try to see and try to ensure that the single market for travel, the right to freedom of travel will continue, which is why they extended the COVID certificate until, until at least the end of next summer. And it's why the, um, your booster shot can now be on your COVID certificate. And everybody has to have a booster shot within nine months of their first full vaccination in order for your vaccination status to continue. It's fascinating to see what that might mean domestically. And just moving away from, from transport, just on an overall health view, obviously the EU doesn't control health policy in individual member states, but mm -hmm. is there any talk of there being any extra funding to try and help member states through the health issues that might arise out of this? Well, it depends on what the funding were before. I mean, there, there isn't, like you said, the EU, the EU doesn't have comp the competence over the health. I mean, for example, we did see 100 million euro given to member states uh, for antigen testing. That was um, at the start of the summer when the COVID certificate was announced. And obviously Ireland didn't partake in that because it wasn't acknowledging ant antigen tests at the time. So that's the type of funding you could see. But um, there isn't really a fund for that per se. I mean, the EU's, as well, its main job has been to secure the vaccines for all 27 member states. And it has secured another 1.8 billion vaccines for boosters uh, and also funding towards um, creating vaccines for escape variants uh, like Omicron. So it's sort of looked ahead in that regard. But restrictions and anything like that are down to member states, whether it's to do with uh, only allowing vaccinated people in or people with negative PCR tests into restaurants or nightclubs and so on. That's all the prerogative of a member state. The EU doesn't have any competency there. It only has competency when it comes to the movement of people and the single market. And that's why it may come in and speak to Portugal about uh, demanding an extra PCR test. But I, I, I don't think that Portugal will, will be end by any means be told by Brussels that it can't do that. And in fact, Gavin, I'd say you could see other countries follow suit, even including Ireland, perhaps. OK, Sean Murray, Europe correspondent with Euronews, joining us from Brussels this evening. Thank you very much for joining us on The Tonight Show. Now, Minister of State Joe O'Brien and Sinn Féin's Darren O'Rourke are still with me in studio. We're also now joined by Owen Corrie, the editor of Air and Travel magazine. Um, Owen, it's already been a fairly dicey couple of years for the aviation industry. Does this pose a real existential threat to those who have survived? It's interesting, existential is what we used word that's been thrown around. We've saw, seen very few airlines fail. They've been nursed through it by state aid. And we saw a very interesting summer where the low cost, red, led by Ryanair, returned in large numbers, you know, extended market share. 
but it really has been crisis to crisis. And the, what saved Europe this July was the common travel area, the digital COVID certificate. And part of that, as Shona pointed out, was the emergency brake system. This is the first test that the emergency brake system has failed. And it's really not looking good, Gavin. What's happened? How do you believe it's failed? It, it's not failed, but it's the first test. It's the first, sorry, it's the first test that uh, it's faced, okay. and um, they, it's not looking good because Portugal has implemented a pretty extreme version of it. It's the second notch down, and introduced. Um, uh, travel measures on land borders with Spain, as well as this requirement that everybody travelling to Portugal does a PCR test, pretty much back to where we were before July, regardless of whether you're vaccinated or not. Now, <clears throat> um, Portugal is the first to jump. Poland has introduced measures for non-Schengen. Switzerland is outside. They've introduced it for four countries. We what we what happened in March 2020 was that the 27 countries went off their own uh, direction. What we had in July was a coherent travel policy introduced by the EU Commission. Shauna said the EU Commission are looking at Portugal. They've given the 48-hour notice to introduce this on Wednesday from midnight on Wednesday. But it really is a great deal of alarm that the entire common travel policy that was put together and took so long to put together could unravel in the face of this challenge. Just before I come back to, to Darren and Joe on this, um, you just said that Poland is implementing now checks for those who are uh, from outside the Schengen area. Does that mean that people who are resident in Ireland who might themselves be Polish, who might have intended to go home for Christmas, that they're now already facing some trouble? No. Um, the way the emergency break works, and this is important, is that it, it it's non-EU citizens that generally have to face all the testing. Um, that's what Poland are talking about. That's what uh, Switzerland are talking about. But uh, the Portugal measure is pretty much blanket. Everybody going to Portugal will need a test before they arrive there. The um, in measures introduced by Boris Johnson, by the way, they are, doesn't apply to Ireland under the common travel area. But very important, if you've been to Spain or Portugal in recent weeks, you will need to do that PCR test uh, um, after arriving. You can do it at the airport or you can do it a day after. Okay. Um, Joe O'Brien, uh, Stephen Donnelly told us earlier in the programme that we're going to be looking at reintroducing mandatory hotel quarantine. A lot of people thought when it was in that it was a fundamentally racist system, that you were quarantining people from other developing world countries without necessarily there being any real ethos as to why you'd single out them over developed Western countries. And now it seems we're going back down that route again. No, I don't think so. And, and I think we're in a very different place now as well to where we were last year. Uh, I, I, what we're doing is preparing to bring it in. We're not, we haven't decided as government to actually bring it in, but we're preparing the legislation so that if we need to move fast, if Omicron develops into something worse than, uh, than we hope it is. So the system will be that, there on standby. That exactly, that okay. we can move very fast. But I do think it needs to be evidence-based uh, and empirical scientific evidence as well uh, before we move to, to mandatory ho hotel so quarantine for any based, country. But right now we already have mandatory quarantine at home for people who have come from South Africa or Lesotho or as between near Botswana. We don't have it for people who are coming from the Netherlands or Belgium or Israel or Scotland, all of which are also countries which are now known to have Omicron on their shores. Yeah, so as part of the, the EU emergency break, we, we, we partook in that decision to, to limit uh, people coming from the seven countries just to be clear it's it's a pcr test in advance and it's household quarantine so it's not it's not mandatory quarantine mandatory hotel quarantine for people coming from them but it's countries. mandatory home quarantine it is illegally yeah. enforceable isn't it, it is indeed yeah okay. it, it is indeed but that's just a, a, an overall initial reaction uh, but i think we need to think carefully about uh, any tighter restrictions uh, beyond that as well uh, darren o'rourke you're Sinn Féin's transport spokesperson what would you be doing right now yeah, I, I think um, I think we are in a different place. Um, I think it is it is important that we have a um, a proportionate response and, and that we do react. But I think, you know, when we heard of of uh, this new variant last Thursday night, I think automatically people thought about the reintroduction of mandatory hotel quarantine. But I think for myself and I'm sure others, you know, you heard then from the WHO, from Mike Ryan, and from others from from scientists and doctors in South Africa, and outlining their perspective in relation to it. And I think it, 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 it made everybody uh, uh, think a second time and I hope it, it's, uh, you know, that argument is, is resonating with, with uh, the Chief Medical Officer and being considered. I think, you know, we will hear from the Chief Medical Officer, we will hear from, from Irish Public Health Advice and I think it is appropriate that we would have the option of mandatory hotel quarantine, but I think we, we are in a different place and there is a suggestion that 
uh, I think going to Cabinet tomorrow, there's a, a proposal that, that everybody coming into the country would have to have a, a, a post-arrival antigen test. Um, and I just wonder in relation to that whether, whether that's the, the, the approach to take. Uh, uh, the, the Chief uh, Scientific Officer, Mark Ferguson, said before the Transport Committee as far back as March, you know, that serial antigen testing uh, done by the individual at home might be, might be an option in terms of facilitating facilitating travel and, and the government didn't go with that now the suggestion that you would do it on a mandatory f for yeah. profit basis well, we're, uh, we're waiting for the cabinet to sign off on that that's going to be a tomorrow morning's cabinet meeting so we don't know exactly where that stands but if the reports are correct joe brining you obviously represent uh, an airport constituency in dublin fingal um there were tds and i remembered earlier this year tds crying out for ireland to reopen its doors to international travel far earlier than it did because a lab conducted uh, antigen test ought to be enough to prove that you weren't infectious or a threat to anyone else and now it seems that eight months on, that's exactly what we're doing anyway. Yeah, but the vaccination situation, I suppose, is, is radically different now as well. And I think there is there is a place for uh, antigen tests in, in facilitating aviation as well. But we do so just have to... So it done eight months previously then? Sorry? Why wasn't it done in springtime then? Uh, because we were in a, a different situation vaccination-wise. We're, we're in a very good situation now as regards the protection of the wider population. What difference well. does vaccination make to whether you can take an antigen test or not? Well, you've got a safer population coming in. I mean, antigen tests, as I said earlier on, isn't as reliable as the PCR. So we needed we needed reliability when the vaccination levels were much lower as well in terms of uh, in terms of infection. So are we now only then recommending that antigen tests are acceptable because we've run out of PCR capacity? No, it's not. It's not to do with that. It's about, I suppose, moving on to the next stage of COVID now that we have our high vaccination rate and and stepping back to to a level of normality and putting discretion back into people's hands in terms of how we manage uh, this virus going forward as well. Oh, and are there many countries that are happy to accept a, an, an antigen test conducted in the lab as, as proof of non-infections? It's pretty weird, the antigen sceptics of Europe. I mean, everybody else went with it. I think the uh, countries that you look to that manage their way through this with keeping borders open, keeping their internet, their air travel open, and keeping, like Germany, it was relentless, continuous testing. That was the approach they took. And it took a while for Ireland to follow in on that. On the mandatory hotel quarantine, it was just a series of scandals. It was a solo run by Ireland. And nobody else in Europe did anything remotely like this. And uh, I think the minister himself said today it was travel bookings fell off a cliff and it achieved what it uh, set out to do at, at different stages. When we had mandatory hotel quarantine with the highest infection rate in Europe, it had no impact on public it health. It might have helped us get rid of having the highest infection rate. <laughs> uh, if, if, sorry, if we'd had mandatory hotel quarantine. Um, it, 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 it had no impact. I mean, it was quite clearly had no impact. I don't think you can say that definitively. I do, I do think it, it, it limited travel from countries with a much higher level of infection, and it helped us to get where we were in terms of our, so our, our good the very position. fact that it was a disincentive... Is, is how it probably worked. Yes, exactly. But there's and easier and ways think, to put a disincentive I, I, I think in the mandatory hotel you know, quarantine. And, and it's about uh, you know using the, the appropriate response at the, at the appropriate time. I think there is an argument uh, and a good one that it def you know it protected the rollout of the vaccine. But I, I think it would be remiss to have this conversation and not pick up on the point that has been made in South Africa and other places that what's needed here in terms of the emergence of variants is the, the mass rollout of vaccinations across the globe, mm -hmm. not just on a European or an Irish basis, that and that needs to be addressed. So whether it's a TRIPS waiver or whatever tool needs to take place, the, the capacity is there uh, in India and elsewhere, that needs to be available uh, now. TRIPS waiver, for people who aren't familiar with the terminology, TRIPS is the, the means by which you can waive intellectual property on certain things. And there's been campaigning from uh, the likes of India to try and have intellectual property waived to allow other countries to uh, manufacture using the technology that was publicly funded. Um, Joe Bryan, Ireland has been somewhat reluctant to back a TRIPS waiver we're looking for a common European position and they're worried about a chilling effect on future innovation. Yeah, I think we're in a different situation now and I think we really have to consider actually supporting the TRIPS waiver. We have evidence now with the Omicron um, variant coming to the fore and it's likely next year we're going to see other variants as well, being realistic about it. And part of the reason that that's the case is the usually uneven level of vaccination across the world. So I, I, I think TRIPS waivers should be put back on the table and Ireland should consider supporting it. Um, oh, and it's only 26 days now until Christmas, and this would usually be the busiest time of year. Uh, right now, there probably aren't too many, with the notable exception, obviously, of the, the Munster rugby team, uh, too many people who are completely stranded as it stands right now. But if other countries like, for example, the US were to go down the route that the UK has done, you could have serious problems with Irish people trying to get back around the world in time for the holidays.
Yeah, I mean, Morocco uh, closing tonight. We had a flight uh, delayed two hours getting out to Morocco today. Um, the trip, the flights to South Africa, uh, open to Irish people, are very much curtailed. Uh, the two BAs, uh, the two to uh, Johannesburg took off from Heathrow tonight in Cape Town. The KLM is continuing to run. You know, the likes of the Munster players caught have huge difficulty scrambling to get back. It's as you said, it's all family or sporting connections at the moment. But of the countries that we go to in numbers, uh, America and Canada are the ones really to watch. They could decide. We have uh, a lot of European countries now with this variant, and it's as already uh, could be present in a lot more of them, including ourselves. In, in a bizarre way, then, are we almost hoping that the US and Canada find out that they've already got it and that they don't need to shut the doors? Well, Canada already has it from Nigeria. So, you know, the, 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 the straightforward cause and effect that it's South Africa uh, is no longer applying even tonight, and a lot more will happen in the next 24 hours. The real question is, will uh, travel within Europe come under pressure? And will those... Uh, protocols which took so long to negotiate and put in place last July unravel in the face of this. That's a big challenge facing um, everybody tonight. Interesting times ahead. We will leave it there. My thanks to Darren O'Rourke and to Owen Corrie. Joe will be